All right, what's up, y'all? Take a fan here. As you can see by the title of today's video, we're here for the truth about slashers in NBA 2K23. Now, a couple of things that stand out the most and kind of the most obvious as well is going to be that they're bringing back the dunk meter for 2K23. If you're someone who played 22 next gen, you already know that's a thing. And I got to say, I was a huge fan of it. I loved it myself. And obviously, anybody going from current gen to next gen is going to be in for a brand new surprise with that. I think it's actually a pretty delightful surprise if you get used to it. It's not going to be something you should be scared of, in my opinion. Now, not to mention, I don't know. I don't think 2K has mentioned anything as far as current gen goes or old gen, whatever you want to call it. If the dunk meter is going to be added to that game as well, they haven't really mentioned anything as far as the correlation between adrenaline boost either. So I don't know. They haven't been dropping very much information, particularly about current gen. That's just how I've been kind of seeing it. But anyway, a new thing that stands out is going to be the flexibility that you have between dunks. Now, as we know, there's been up, down, left, right on the stick in the past, and you can kind of control it in that aspect. You can do left hand dunks with your left on the stick, you can do right hand dunks with the right on the stick, flashy dunks, or in last year's game, contact dunks, aka the dunk meter with down on your stick, and then the infamous quick drops off one with up on your stick, the two hand conservative dunks, and they have brought all of that stuff back. However, there's a couple modifications to it. So as you can see, they have the up, up, down, up, AKA we'll just, we'll make this more simple. There's an up, up, a down, down, a down, up, an up, down mechanic that are now being added. Not to mention, I'm very curious how this is gonna work right here. It's actually gonna irritate me really bad <laughs> if this is how it reads because they read that it's right on your stick for strong hand and left for the weak hand. I'm assuming they're just talking about a right-handed player in this example. I sure hope that's the case because oh, it's gonna be so stupid if you're a left-handed player and you hold left on your stick and it does your right hand. That'd be so dumb. It'd be so, so stupid. They, <laughs> I pray to God, do not do something that dumb. But anyway, before we get too far into this, if you're new to the channel, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on them noties, all that good stuff, and let's try and just one 500 likes. But what I want to talk about before we go too far is just my kind of impression on how this game is going to play as a slasher. Now, they've added a lot of different finishing badges, we'll get to that in just a second as well, but things like bully where you can just absolutely just dominate people by shoving through them pushing through them i am under the impression that maybe strength will matter this year when it comes to finishing i have never ever ever thought that strength matters in that aspect at all you can sue me for it if the, if you think otherwise i'm just letting you guys know i've played on a slasher for literally like seven years in a row at this point and i've never felt like strength matters at all for getting you more dunks getting you more dunk animations anything like that but if there ever were a year that I'm going into the game thinking, yeah, it's probably pretty likely that strength will matter for slashers, it's going to be this one. Just due to the type of badges that they've added into this game and the type of mechanics they're speaking about, being able to bully through people and just kind of shove people out the way. You'll see as we get a little bit further into it with the layups as well. The next little topic that I wanted to kind of jump to is back to Twitter right here. So we have Mike Wang and they kind of co-signed it with the NBA 2K. I don't know why they do that or how you even do it on Twitter for that matter. But anyway. <laughs> This tweet says, driving dunk rating dictates how easy it is to block dunk attempts. Flashy dunks boost your takeover meter faster than basic ones. So we have a little bit of a ode to showtime from back in 2K21 current gen. I gotta say, it was actually a pretty fun badge to utilize. It did make things kind of interesting though, as far as the meta of the game, how that is dictated. And not to mention, if you are a slasher, someone who actually makes builds with like 92 plus driving dunk rating, this type of news is really good for you because obviously it rewards you for having a better dunk rating. Now, I will say, I don't like the fact that they're talking about tomahawks and stuff like that are like considered a flashy dunk. Now, what this is also gonna come down to though is what is considered a flashy dunk. So. I feel like anything that has shown up as flashy dunk in the past has been things like windmills, 360s, just kind of ones that aren't really convenient to run. I don't think tomahawks should be listed in that. I will say, I don't think back scratchers should be either. I think back scratchers are more of like a powerful dunk. I think things like windmills and 360s are the flashy dunks in my personal opinion. And I feel like that's how 2K has kind of gone about it as well. For all we know, park dunks might be back as well. And if that is the case, they will definitely fall under the classification of flashy dunks as well. So definitely keep that in mind. But anyway, I liked hearing this a little bit as well. Driving dunk rating dictates how easy it is to block dunk attempts. Now, this has probably been a thing in the past as well. I don't know if this is really new news by any means, but the fact that the emphasis is put on this a little bit is pretty nice. I think honestly what all this news kind of says to me in this little tweet right here is that you will be rewarded for having a good dunk rating. 
opposed to how it was this year where in my opinion it was really if you had 74 driving dunk you play like a slasher like really really capably now yes you can't get contact dunks but that 74 driving dunk gave you some silver limitless takeoff and quick drops off one very manageably you only needed 65 driving dunk for quick drops off one and really 65 gave you bronze limitless takeoff as well so overall you really could have 65 driving dunk and play like a very capable slashing player you could just have really good shooting really good playmaking take advantage of some of the defense that you can add to it and just have 65 driving dunk and you won't feel limited in your finishing ability whereas this year i really hope that's not the case now i've had 2k listen to my input on things in the past at least it feels like like for instance this badge tiering system was one straight out of one of my badge tier list videos that i made this year and definitely spoke on that topic very heavily if they are hearing me right now and this is a change that they could make easily before the game comes out make quick drops off one require at least like 80 to 85 driving dunk there is no reason for dudes having 65 driving dunk having one of the most efficient dunk animations in the game and i've heard people talk about that's not realistic it's one of the easiest dunks to do listen it's so like uncompetitively balanced it just doesn't make any sense to do that in my opinion to give people one of the best dunks in the game that honestly you would me as a slasher me as a pure slasher who could have 99 driving dunk i could take every single dunk off except for that one and it's the best thing I could do. That is stupid that you would allow people to do something like that with such a low driving dunk rating. So again, in my opinion, I think the right threshold for that would be around 85 driving dunk, something like that. I think that's pretty respectable. Anything that requires to the point where you have contact dunks. I think it's a complete bailout to give people quick drops when they don't have contact dunks. Because really the people that are benefited by quick drops the most are the ones that play kind of outside in, where you have to respect their jump shot super hard, then because you have to respect their jump shot, you, they get past you, and then the quick drops are to avoid getting chased down, where you have to be behind them because you were playing so high on their jump shot. Again, I don't think pure slashers or anybody who is play inside out really needs quick drops for that matter because you're more contact dunk based you're more power you're more like not really worry about people chasing you down quite as much because they were sacking off on you in the first place anyway that was a kind of a tangent right there i wanted to talk about the quick drops and my opinion on it and again like i said they can still change that by any means all the way until the game comes out and they've even still taken animation thresholds and moved it up in the past as well but again very easy for them to change that if they are hearing this i 100 suggest suggest you guys do that but yeah, so just to finalize my recap on this tweet right here, lots of really good things to hear if you're a slasher and you're reading this stuff, driving dunk rating, if it's high, makes it harder for people to block you, flashy dunks, booster takeover meter faster than basic ones, which is also cool to hear if you have really high driving dunk, and then things like back trashers, windmills, tomahawks, and other flashy dunks are much harder to block in general. Now, I don't know how true that's going to be. Who knows? I feel like people have already complained quite a bit about interior defense in the in like the last game, whether it was current gen or next gen. Now, albeit it was in a very different aspect. I feel like for next gen, it was so like you rarely saw people go for contact dunks or use that dunk meter in the first place. They were scared of it. I played probably two people all year who used it even nearly as good as me or any of the teammates that I played with. Like, I feel like the best three people I played with or against was me, Kitchen, and Tonic when it came to the dunk meter. And I feel like that's just because it kind of ran in our kind of nature of the people that we played with. Everybody was able to kind of give each other advice on stuff like that. But anyway, like I said, it was very rare that people use that dunk meter on 22. I think we came from a game though where people in current gen especially were complaining about the interior defense where it was so brain dead people get to hold down on their stick and no meter pops up obviously either so it's not really skill based and not to mention both games had horrible interior defense when it comes to the close shots so when you give people more reason to complain about stuff like that I don't know I just feel like this last one right here might be kind of cap I don't know about the whole other flashies are much harder to block in general. Same with like back scratches, windmills, tomahawks. I don't think they're gonna do that. If I'm being honest, I'm trying. I'm trying to read through their BS a little bit with that prediction. All right, now back to the article. I already talked about all the badge changes in like two videos ago, but I want to go over the finishing ones one last time again. So the only one that they removed is hook specialist, and that has nothing to do with slashers, obviously. But a lot of new badges that kind of combine a ton of badges into one and i want to talk about how cool that is for the sake of badge budgeting for finishers so they're going to be adding this new tiering system where you're going to have only a select amount of badges you can equip where you can have eight really bad ones aka tier one four really decent ones in tier two and then four really good ones in tier three that'll probably be a little less complicated as we actually actually get our hands on the game but i want to talk about how convenient it makes all of this for us slashers so 
We have things like Slithery, makes it easier to gather through traffic. That sounds like Acrobat to me, which is also like Acrobat in one helps for Euros, it helps for hop dunks, it helps for spin dunks, whatever the case may be. It's a really good badge that I think really complex slashers would love to have, and Acrobat is really good on its own. But then, for that matter, they added Avoiding Collisions and Strips, which sounds a little bit like fancy footwork in previous games, or let's say maybe even Fearless Finisher. And then you have Strips avoiding them as well, so Unstrippable. So it literally sounds like three badges put into one. So Slithery is definitely going to be one of those top tier badges. I think they'd be crazy if they didn't make this a tier three badge. Slithery Finisher was already like a top tier badge, maybe the best one for finishers already. So to add two more abilities to it, or maybe even three, <laughs> it'd be crazy if they didn't make it a tier three badge. So this will definitely be one of the best ones you could run. You have Masher right here, which is going to be, in my opinion, it sounds like the one that's tied to height advantages. So if you have like a six foot nine, six foot eight slasher and you play at the one, let's say you're a guy that likes 2v2 maybe, right? And you play with a taller big man that can shoot at the two spot and you at the one, you're maybe an oversized point guard. You're just kind of on some like Ben Simmons stuff, some really tall PG that likes to slash. You have contact dunks, you have mediocre dribbling, but you make it work. I think Masher is going to be a huge badge for you when it comes to the dunking and layup ability. Not to mention it sounds just extremely OP for taller players like 7'2", 7'3's when it comes to the paint mashing down below of pump faking and just throwing up contested standing layups. So if you're going to be someone above 6'7", 6'6", I think this badge is going to be really good for you as well. Who knows what tier they're going to put it in, maybe like the 2 or 3, something like that. I don't think this would be a tier 1 badge by any means, that'd be crazy talk, but that's just my opinion on that. Aerial Wizard, I think this would be decent for like finishers out there. Like if you like to play how my 2k20 finisher did or how any of my like 6 foot 9 wing players that I have play like a big man do, this will probably be a decent badge for you. I like to run Lob City Finisher, whether it's just the badge on its own in any game to be honest, at least on bronze, maybe silver, depends on the badge like capping and this will probably be like a tier 1 badge. I think it'd be a really bad badge to make hard to get makes a lot of sense for this to be affordable. So Aerial Wizard is ability to successfully complete alley-oops and putbacks. So it's two badges put into one, once again, like I said, I still think though this belongs in tier one because you're just combining two really underpowered, really bad badges and allowing this to be put into one. I think that's a really good thing to have in tier one. It'll make it very like usable and people will definitely want to use this and it'll provoke them to doing so. Next up you have Bully, which seems to be the most kind of like, I would say controversial badge of them all. I don't know why people aren't talking about Slithery being controversial, it literally combines so many badges into one. <laughs> but again, they, they just see being able to bulldoze through traffic and people hate hearing that because it's like rewarding bad offense. Although at the same time, if you have the defensive build that can't hang with this, I think it really simulates the right type of gameplay, honestly. Now I'm a little bit biased in this sense, for sure. But anyway, description of it, like Giannis and LeBron, able to finish strong by bulldozing through traffic. This definitely seems like it's going to be tied more into, like, it's weird because I feel like to do stuff like this, you have to do those finesse finishes where it's going to be hop steps, maybe Euro dunks, maybe, you know, stuff like that where you're sliding past people or you get those animations. I don't think you'll be able to just, like, hold down on your stick and just, like, pile drive right through people. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. I feel like they're going to require you to do a couple of finesse finishes to be able to provoke this badge into doing stuff, aka the 2k20 long athlete layup package that we all know about at this point, where you got the crazy hop dunks, hop steps, hop lays, whatever you want to call them. Definitely something to look out for. Um, I don't think they're going to be bringing the spin dunk back. I, it was obviously was not in the last game, like the super crazy, majestic, big time spin dunk that looked like some just out of this world stuff. It's probably not in this game because it wasn't in the last one. That would be my understanding of it. Now to scroll back up to some of the finishing notes that we have right here. I don't know how important this is to know or not. So as you can see the down down rim hang skill dunk with meter mechanic right and not to mention I think what the case is going to be for those of you who might be kind of confused about this whole combo situation. I think what you're going to do is flick it on the first combo of it and then hold it for the next one. So if you want to do a flashy two hand dunk I'm assuming it's probably going to be flick up on your stick, then hold up on your stick after it. So you're kind of just setting up like the, the precursor with this first one, then you do it after that. Because as you can see, if you go down up, I'm assuming it's flicking down, then up. Because when you end with a down, it's anything with the meter. So if you start it up, I'm assuming it's a flick up and then hold down. And that'll be normal skill dunk with meter. As you can see, like I said, it ends with the down. And then if you flick down and then hold down after it, I'm assuming it's this rim hang skill dunk with meter. I don't know how much people are going to be doing this. 
they have a couple of really like descriptive things on it and they sound really hyped about it in the, the whole little description down here. But the thing is, if you're not rewarding people for doing the rim hangs, I don't think any competitive aspect of it is going to be applied. I feel like if you gave more takeover meter or something like that for as long as you hang on the rim, it could be a really cool addition. But then again, you have things like 2v2 or 1v1 where you have to check the ball up. So that's just where like things like that would be exploited if that's the case, if you don't put a certain like time cap on it or if they just can't do it because it's make it take it. So honestly, the only time that this should ever be like applied to the game, if it were something where they give you more takeover. And again, this is not a thing that they've listed. I'm just kind of theorizing this. If they ever allowed you to get more takeover for the longer you hang on the rim, it needs to be a pro-am or 3v3 thing only. Anywhere where it's not make it take it. That's the only place this, this could ever be applied or else you will see <laughs> some cheese, some big cheese on that 2v2 and 1v1 court. Anyway, yeah, they just give some description on the whole like hanging on the rim meter thing. Now, I will say it says it's only available on new gen. So I want to mention that I don't think a lot of these little combo things here or maybe even for that matter, the dunk meter at all is going to be on current gen. That's just me kind of throwing stuff out there. I don't know whether that's a fact or not that they even have it in current gen or not. But anyway, and then they mentioned that you can get text if you hang on it too long in NBA games. I'm wondering if that's also the possibility in like, for instance, Pro-Am. That could be the case, but who knows? Anyway, the last nice little thing to read right here is going to be this little tab right here that says finesse your way to the rack. I think there's also some stuff down below this as well. Yeah, so they mentioned for like bigger and stronger players down below it. But for this one. They mentioned that there's like, for instance, the double throws. I think the double throws are to flick your stick in the same direction, AKA what they were talking about here. If you like, I think up, up is a double throw. Whereas a down up is what they're talking about right here, where it's, uh, where is it? They mentioned switchback gestures. I feel like switchback is kind of what you're talking about. So like, for instance, with Eurostep, Honestly, in real life, you're kind of faking the ball to the right, then coming back to the left anyway on a Euro. So I'm assuming that's the case that they're gonna be trying to make with that, where you flick your stick maybe to the right and then hold it back to the left to do a Euro in that direction. Same way that you would do it in reverse. You would flick it to the left and hold it to the right to do a Euro to the right. Whereas maybe things like the throw gestures that they're talking about right here for the hop step layups, would be for instance, let's say the ball is in your left hand. If you double flick it to the right, AKA like flick it one time to the right, then hold it to the right the next one, you'll do the double throw, AKA the hop step to your off hand. Whereas if you do it two times to your ball hand, maybe that just does it to your ball hand. That's probably where I would assume this is headed. And <laughs> that's pretty much as simple as that. I wonder if the, I wonder how like creative they let you get with this stuff. Also like wonder what cradle dunks would be or cradle layups, whatever the case may be with that stuff. I'm, I feel like they're missing something too. So like spins, I'm curious if they're wanting your spin to be kind of tied into the X button instead, or your like, you know, square, if you will. But anyway, my whole thing with this is that they have a lot of just kind of things that are incentivizing you to use your right stick when it comes to finishing. And likewise with the contact dunk meter as well. So I'm a little bit curious how spins tie into all that type of stuff because they don't mention anything in it as well. But anyway, like, like you can see right here, a simple hold left or right will perform an all new set of quick scoop layups as well. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, there's already something for the small guards. If you give them that, definitely do not give them the quick drops, man. Like it's literally as simple as that. I mean, the layups make sense. The layups are more chase downable, yet at the same time, if you're someone that literally only has like 50 dunk rating as a max on your build or 65 or something like that, you shouldn't be able to do very many quick or flashy dunks by any means. And you should be able to rely on quicker layups that you can let go of kind of on some Steph Curry stuff. I think it makes a lot of sense to relate it to that. Whereas the layups are more chase downable and more blockable, but they still are very quick and with the right body manipulation in real life, you can definitely block people off from getting those blocks. I'm not gonna lie though, you don't have that control on 2K most likely. So who knows how that even relates to all that stuff. We'll see, we'll see how the small guard stuff is looking like. And then I'm not sure how floaters fit into all this stuff. I'm not sure if you can like combo a like say Euro into floater. I think that'd be really cool if they give you that type of customization. I feel like I've done that in the past anyway, for that matter. But regardless, as you can see, they just are talking more about the whole quickly flick up the ball around defenders before they can react. They also show video footage of it right here of Devin Booker throwing a floating layup right here or like a quick 
quick layup. I don't know how quick that really looks. It looks more like a body up contact layup to me personally. I don't think this is really stopping the defender from doing anything. I just think the defender is not really big enough to really get involved with that. And this is a layup that is not going to go very often. This is not one that like goes in very often. I'm sure that's some BS. They're, they're not like really showing much at all with that in my opinion. But anyway, Next up you have for the bigger, stronger players, and I will mention this is the last little tab that we have, and then I'll just kind of give my discussion on where I think the state of slashes will be in this game. But for the bigger, stronger players, you'll experience a lot of new contact layup content that properly shows what should happen when a player like Giannis plows through everyone in their path. Now who knows if the builder is going to allow you to even make a player like Giannis, because to be honest with you, that's not possible in most of the recent 2Ks. <laughs> like you can't make 6 foot 11 builds with 80 something speed and have like 92 driving dunk or 95 driving dunk, whatever he has. Like I mean, that just isn't a thing. So just keep that in mind. But anyway, in addition we've added several new layup packages for both new and current gen including Devin Booker, Joel Embiid, Allen Iverson, Magic Johnson, Jokic, Levine, Morant, Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi, and more. So what sticks out to me as ones that could maybe be good for slashers? Well, obviously John Morant, Zach Levine stand out. I don't know if I'd ever rely on something like Magic Johnson, Allen Iverson. I don't know. I'm not going to lie. Allen Iverson might be kind of nice. It could be pretty solid. Devin Booker sounds like more of a basic one. I don't think this would really be anything worth with this news though of adding Embiid and Jokic as far as layup packages go, that definitely gives a little bit of kind of note to the fact that tall bigs will have a couple lay different layup packages. Like for tall bigs, I'm trying to think what even are like viable ones that are even worth anything. For that matter, it kind of just doesn't really change much. I feel like the standing lays are pretty similar layup animations. If they kind of change that a little bit, it would be pretty cool and maybe taller bigs would have to upgrade a little bit of driving layup. Or something like that but for that matter most people really don't care they'll just go with the basic standard big man stuff or just whatever they can get and not really have to worry about the driving layup and then the last thing for post players double throws can be used for post drop steps hop shots whatever the case may be i mean this is post stuff we're not here to talk about it <laughs> we're here to just talk about the slashing finishing layups acrobatic stuff any of the euros spins hops lays whatever you want to talk about and just the badges too so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did for to drop a like sub if you're new turn on the noties all that good stuff and like always tries one to 500 likes if you made it to the end of the video even though i will have a little topic that i want to talk about before we go but if you made it to this point in the video put slash or finish in the comments show support your mail all the way through to this point now my opinions on slashers in this game like i said i'm never one to believe that strength is ever gonna matter heading into a 2k game because i've just been proven to think that i'm wrong for thinking that way every single time i load up a game so if i had to say whether i'm going to put strength on my slasher off rip or not without any testing at all like if i had to just jump straight in the builder and commit to my build right away I would assume that strength is not going to be a focal point, but I will probably do a little bit of game testing, play around with it. Maybe maybe Toots or 2K Labs will put together something really quickly as well that gives you guys some intel on that. But for me, I'm probably going to have to make that decision very quickly to the point where I'll have to do my own baby form of testing and not do a whole lot of it. But again, if I had to assume, strength sounds like it actually will play a little bit of a factor with the fact that maybe it'll be tied into like the... Uh, what's it called the bully badge where you're maybe gonna have to have a certain amount of strength to even have the badge it's probably not anything to do with really your drive eh, it will be tied to your driving dunk and driving layup rating but i'm assuming strength will be the other factor in that whereas like for contact dunks vertical is what matters for the most part but how do i really feel about slashers overall i think this is an improvement i think they're overhauling it i have to assume two year two of <laughs> i know that's a lot of twos right there but year two of the dunk meter i have to assume they'll fix a couple of the bugs like for instance the fact that you can get blocked on greens the meter itself of its like green area and just kind of make that more visible not to mention the delay between game modes as well because if you're doing offline there's literally zero delay to the dunk meter now here's what's weird now if anybody at 2k is still listening this far into the video you're doing your job well <laughs> if you clicked on the video and you made it this far so kudos to you but if you are watching this video i just have to say the dunk meter in this game of 2K22 Next Gen, it is not delayed 
online, it is not delayed for regular dunks. So if I'm just driving to the hoop, nobody's in my way, the dunk meter is not delayed. Where it is delayed, and this is why I know it's a, it's a game issue, not like an internet issue or a latency issue or just anybody's difficulty, is because it is delayed on contact dunks, but it's not delayed on open dunks or people near you dunks where you're getting a regular dunk animation. It's literally only the contact dunk meter and that variety of timing forces you to have to adjust visually every single time because you don't know if you're getting a regular dunk or a contact dunk. So you just have to like adjust your timing based on if you think you're getting a contact dunk animation or not. And if you do end up getting a contact dunk, you have to let it go so much quicker to, d to just be able to deal with that delay. Whereas with regular dunks, if you let it go so much quicker to the point where you're dealing with the delay on a contact dunk, you're going to end up just letting it go way too early because there is no delay on regular dunks that aren't contacts. So I just got to say, hopefully that is tuned as well and fixed because it really should just be something that gives you the right timing every single time and you don't have to adjust for in-game latency that is literally just created by the game for some stupid reason. But anyway, that's my kind of points and just debates and topics and stuff like that. I'm sure you'll still have to time your alley-oop meter as well, which is perfectly fine with me. That's very simple to do as well. And overall, I think this will be a good year for slashers. It, last year was horrible. I feel like that dunk meter really deterred a lot of people from playing on it. And to be fair, maybe it does again. Maybe the brain dead slashers truly were a thing where people really just were built on that. I feel like I've always tried to push it to the most complex aspect that I can with slashing. I didn't really do that so well last year though. I think I got reeled in by the tall big stuff because it was meta. I want to stick to my roots of like smaller bigs or the taller slashers that really can like dominate in the driving dunk aspect. So you guys can definitely expect that is in my interest this year, 100%. Now who knows, maybe I'll get reeled in by the taller bigs again if they're super dominant and they don't put like certain speed caps on them and stuff and you need them to rebound or whatever the case may be. I'll obviously be making the most competitive thing possible for Pro-Am, but for content, I'm definitely looking to stick to the slasher stuff. It's something I'm missing. I really want more of that stuff, bro. It's so fun to play like that, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate as well. So anyway, that's all video. Hope you enjoyed. And again, if you made it to the end of the video, put finish or end in the comments. So it's important that you made it all the way to this point in the video. But anyway, that's all. I will maybe talk about some defensive stuff in the next video, but to be fair, we already talked about kind of some defensive stuff. I wanted to get this video out for sure though, because I feel like there's a lot of finishing things that some people maybe need to think a little deeper on for sure. But anyway, that's all. Hope you enjoyed. Take these, man. Peace.